Pokemon is one of the biggest franchises of all time, and despite the recent successes of a competitor survival title, one just down the road, Pal World, Pokemon has reigned supreme for decades throughout all forms of media. The interesting thing about the franchise, however, is despite their dominance, they have often been accused of stagnation and lacking innovation. Most specifically, the trading card game part of Pokemon has been historically underrepresented and relegated largely to just collection. Pokemon somehow lost their connection to the actual trading card game portion of their franchise, when the anime was originally designed to sell cards and merchandise. Pokemon TCG Online was supposed to be the answer to this. While not fully designed as a separate Pokemon Online game, it was supposed to be the ultimate companion to the hard card portion of the game. Developed by Direwolf Digital of Eternal and many other card games fame, Pokemon TCG Online would launch in 2011 and was supposed to be Pokemon's big foray into the online gaming scene, something they had basically kept out of completely. Twelve years later and Pokemon TCG Online would be replaced, almost overnight, by Pokemon TCG Live. Many fans were less than happy with the shift, even if they got to keep some of their old cards. We will discuss that and the death of the Pokemon TCG Online itself. On this episode of Death of a Game, a series where we take the largest contributing factors to a game's death and chronicle them over the course of a timeline looking for bits of evidence and clues, culminating in everyone's favorite final deduction. Pick your starter deck or Pokemon and let's play Pokemon. Before we get to the case, do you know what game is actually growing in popularity? Millions of players enjoy today's video sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is a free-to-play large-scale multiplayer action game featuring ground, air, and naval combat. The game is available on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Mac. In War Thunder, all advanced military technologies are available. Guided missiles, active protection systems, smoke screens, night vision devices, and more. As well as reconnaissance and strike drones, and even nuclear strikes that can flatten the entire map. Graphics and physics and sound in War Thunder are constantly improving, so the game looks stunning and allows players to immerse themselves in the atmosphere of a real war with the dynamics of a Hollywood blockbuster. Fans may enjoy the recent update called Air Superiority. Developers added tons of new equipment, including the famous T-90M, the Su-27, and the F-15 Eagle, and many more. You may also explore the new Volcano Valley map, which allows you to test the latest aircraft and battles amongst volcanoes. Download War Thunder for free by using the link in the description. All new players and those who haven't played War Thunder for half a year or more will receive some special bonuses. Rentals for the P-40E1 aircraft and M4 tank for a week along with free unique skins for them. A special decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and three premium vehicles for free. A week of premium account and even more gifts. Hurry up, the American vehicle bonus season will end soon. Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to the case. The story begins sometime before 2011, with the entering of Direwolf Digital, a third-party developer contracted by the Pokémon company to work on the upcoming Pokémon online game. Direwolf Digital was experienced MTG players, who had started being contracted to work on digital card games. Direwolf Digital historically has worked on Elder Scrolls, a CCG title that I also covered in the series, Eternal, a competitive focused CCG of their own, and then sometime between 2009 through 2011, they would start working with the Pokemon Company. Most of their card game experience would come later, following their work on the Pokemon TCG technically, but they were still a fairly experienced card game team that Pokemon had hired to work on their upcoming TCG online title, announced February 2011. The same Pokemon TCG would launch online on browsers March 2011. Pokemon TCG Online was an interesting title. First, it wasn't a full-blown online title, not in the same way you might expect from something like Hearthstone, right? It was more of a companion online game to the actual hard copy of the card game portion of Pokemon. Because of this, it doesn't add any new novel gameplay or modes that players haven't experienced before. There are strengths to this, there's no confusion about what you're getting yourself into, with Pokemon TCG Online being a completely faithful digital recreation of the Pokemon TCG. The weaknesses came from simply lacking features and gameplay that other CCGs and TCGs already had featured online. The strength of Pokemon TCG Online, besides being a faithful recreation of the children's card game, children's card game, was the ability to fight against NPCs or trainers and do special challenges. This allowed players to take their paper decks online, which was a unique feature of the game as well, and practice them against bots. Or use one of the themed starter decks that you could choose from, which gave you a healthy head start when playing online period. 
Both of these were highly sought after and prized features in TCGs or CCGs, and worked really well in the Pokemon TCG Online. The theme decks and playstyle, coupled with the legacy formats of classic Pokemon games as far back as Heart Gold, made for fun online playing. Finally, you could trade booster packs or cards for other specific cards from players or shops, which were bot-run market accounts. It really felt like Direwolf Digital was taking inspiration from MTG's online game, MTGO, which was also focused more on trading and collecting than most games, being TCGs and not a CCG. The difference is the trading, of course. Pokemon TCG Online would launch on Windows May 2012, and this staggered launch allowed the developers to gauge what was working and what wasn't and fix their servers, which were heavily taxed on browsers. It also seemed like the ultimate goal was to launch on every platform eventually, greatly further growing Pokemon's TCG audience, which as I mentioned at the very top of the video has historically been rather low, comparatively. But the Pokemon company focusing on their online Pokemon game being more of a companion game was going to hurt it in the perspective of its competition, no matter what. The iOS launch would come September 2014 and was arguably the biggest launch yet in terms of media coverage. IGN, who would review the title in 2014, would have the following to say about the game after scoring it a 6 out of 10. The only strength of the Pokemon trading card game online is that it recreates a great real-world trading card game. But it does it in such a half-hearted, slapdash way that I would much rather be playing the real thing. I'm really disappointed with how unofficial and unpolished it seems and coupled with the unreliable network connections, poor UI, ugly art, and repetitive music, it's just not at all what it has the potential to be. The single player campaign is definitely a plus, especially if you can't find people to play or if you're looking for more of a convenient way to get your Pokemon card fix. So it seemed like Pokemon Company's approach had worked, sort of, but maybe not in the way that they intended. Pokemon TCG Online was supposed to essentially be the companion online game, but it wasn't good enough to stand on its own, and was just making its player base want to play the real thing instead. The Android launch for Pokemon TCG Online would come April 2016, two years after the iOS launch, which felt slow even for the Pokemon Company. I don't know exactly what was taking them so long to launch on all platforms, but considering the game was only continuing to age at that point, it seemed bizarre to see such a staggered launch. Updates were already snail pace for Pokemon TCG Online throughout its life cycle, and many fans argued that this was because the Pokemon company only paid Direwolf Digital to design the game, and not really run it past that point. I mean, Direwolf Digital doesn't even claim the Pokemon TCG on their website list of games. The contract could have expired, and Pokemon either didn't want to renew, or was trying to run things themselves, resulting in even slower development. Direwolf Digital throughout this time was launching and developing nearly a dozen other games themselves. September 2021 and mixed news would hit the web. The Pokemon TCG Online was going to be replaced by Pokemon TCG Live. While on the surface this could seem only like an upgrade, there were some serious concerns as to why it was even necessary in the first place when the first game got such little support, but maybe this meant that things were different, and why this time it wasn't utilizing the previous code from the previous game or just the previous developers. The Pokemon Company going in-house, according to most fans, was a way to save money, especially as Direwolf Digital's price probably had only grown. The problem was by going in-house with a virtually new team, they wouldn't be able to leverage the industry experience that Direwolf Digital had been acquiring now for pretty much a decade, and specific experience that they had with the Pokemon TCG, including the previous online game that they made. The new Pokemon game takeover would be delayed until 2022, and players expected the delay to be a polishing delay, which is not what they got. After Pokemon TCG Live would launch, the servers would be hit with innumerable issues and players would have tons of performance issues as well, which was bizarre for such a technically underwhelming game. I mean, it's a guard game. I expected the new version of the TCG digital game to be highly touted. I guess my thought was them going with another team could just be a positive for them to pump more money into it, and have more control on the process. Instead, what we got with the new Pokemon TCG Live game was a game that had even less features than the previous game, and most digital card games, and performed worse. One of the biggest things that's missing with the new Pokemon TCG, as the name implies, is the TCG part, the trading card game part. 
you can't actually trade in Pokemon Live. You have to trade the cards for credits, then go buy those credits, just kind of like the Hearthstone system. And even worse, you have to progress through a battle pass to unlock new cards. While they would let you transfer your previous decks, they were effectively completely removing the trading portion of the game and thus changing the core economy. Now this creates interesting discussion, but a lot of the time it's kind of steamed in misinformation, because it's a battle sometimes of socialism versus capitalism. For example, players might feel that the change is actually a positive, because in the previous system sometimes inflation would hit popular cards and then they would become hard to obtain. But now you can't trade at all and thus lose near complete value on any cards that you wouldn't need. Even with a duplicate process in place, you would still lose value in the end. The argument I imagine is that these players feel like, well, I don't care about trading or participating in a player economy. Which is fair, but doesn't lend itself to a TCG, which is what a Pokemon TCG, or in this case Pokemon TCG Live, was supposed to be. But giving up your ability to actually own cards in favor of a battle pass designed to monetize you while giving you some freebies is not a good trade. And before I transition to my next point, I saw many people decrying the market system in general, and the fact that cards could have higher values that were required even when they're not rare, sort of like MTG's tournament system. And I realized that most of these criticisms are kind of like a criticism of capitalism, which is fair and all, but I don't want to play a TCG where I don't own my cards. Sorry. The second major issue of the Pokemon game was that it was missing the entire trainer challenge aspect, which served as a pseudo campaign tutorial and a way to practice your decks against the bots. For me, them not including this shows something worrying about the project itself. How low budget it was. And that's seen in many ways. Sure, they did a fancy trailer and a big marketing push, but it's been largely silent since then. And the game itself lacks just not many features, it, the features that it does have aren't even the best iterations of such. The previous Pokemon TCG game had better mats, more concise playboards, for example, and so on and so forth. The Pokemon company is notorious for being cheap about video games, and it looked like Pokemon TCG Live was another victim of that. It just also meant the shuttering of the Pokemon TCG online game. PTC Geo would officially shut down June 7th, 2023, marking the full end of the transition to PTC GL. And I hate calling it a TCG, it's a CCG. It's a collectible card game, like Hearthstone or like MTG Arena. But if there's not trading in it, it's not a trading card game. The story of Pokemon TCG Online wasn't very ceremonious, continuing to exist for many years in a small but successful state. Or sure, I can acknowledge that. With its shuttering though, and the introduction of the new Pokemon TCG, it seemed like despite the rising popularity of the Pokemon TCG, the digital card game realm was still going to need a lot of work, especially if they wanted to compete with other TCGs or CCGs at some point. It's kind of like, uh, when you guys want to join the party, right? But this isn't entirely surprising for the Pokemon Company, who has faced flack over the last entry into the series and the open world game that they just put out for being seemingly low budget and lacking in competitive features when compared to the market standards. It seems like the Pokemon Company is aging a bit, and is going to have to make some serious leaps in the right direction to stave off losing market share. The franchise, the TCG, the anime, movies, and much more are still very successful, but the video games have been lacking as of late, and the community is understandably angry about that. With that music playing, we have reached the end of our timeline, and we have obtained enough evidence to solve the mystery at hand. Why did the Pokemon TCG online game ultimately die? Well, if you missed the clues along the way, it never got proper Pokemon support. It was kind of another Pokemon gaming common L, at least at the moment, and it wasn't competitively viable as a digital product. Finally, it transitioned to a lackluster CCG replacement that most people weren't happy with. And with that, we have the death of the Pokemon TCG online game, and the continued hobbling of the current TCG game, Live. Live still has visual bugs, I should add, that have been there since launch, which was only a little bit less than a year ago. We do, however, have yet another lukewarm Pokemon game of the modern time, but it's hard to feel bad as a Pokemon fan, when we get tons of content and media in all kinds of forms. Something that I didn't touch on very much in this video was the game part of the TCG of Pokemon. 
Many fans argue that it's more coin flippy than even Hearthstone is, so it has its issues. I just didn't want to waste too much time focusing on that, however, because that's kind of more personal preference. The TCG for Pokemon is rising in popularity, including with streaming and collecting on the rise as well. But Pokemon still exists in this weird limbo where it's kind of not really taken fully seriously as a TCG yet, and the story here doesn't really help matters. And this is bizarre considering the whole history and success of the Pokemon TCG. Thanks for watching. No. You can't use the bathroom, and no, we don't have Wi-Fi. We hear you carry only finest merchandise.